So Dr. Sean Wilson is joining us on the line this morning. Secretary, good morning, and thanks so much uh, for, for being patient with us this morning. Good morning to you, and thank you for your coverage. Well, you know, we, we try to get it to get it all done. Okay, now let's start out with Dr. Sean Wilson. He is the commuter extraordinaire because he goes from Lafayette <laughs> to Baton Rouge every day. So you that is true. You see all the messes every day, don't you? I, I, I do, and uh, I told the reporter shortly after my appointment that in my 18 plus years of commuting back and forth to Baton Rouge from Lafayette, I've only had probably 10 to 12 bad traffic days, but. They looked at me with these strange eyes and said, what's a bad traffic day? A bad traffic day for me is being able to walk on the Chafalaya Basin. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So in reality, I've only had to do that a handful of times over 18, nearly 19 years, and that's really not that bad. Now, that is not to minimize our congestion. It's not to minimize our traffic as much as it is to put it in perspective that over the long haul, um, I've had really safe less travel and uh, the worst time was when the well exploded and we mm -hmm. couldn't travel on I-10, very similar to what folks had uh, most recently with the high water event at the Texas mm -hmm. state line mm -hmm. when you have these uh, you know, abnormal detours. So uh, I am a commuter and uh, I live the traffic every day going and coming from Baton Rouge. And uh, I see it, so I understand what our citizens are going through. Yeah. You know, that's one thing that happened the other day, like you were mentioning the closure on the Texas side with, with I-10 because of the flooding. So do Texas and Louisiana at that point, do, do you as secretary, do you contact or do they get with you? And is that a mutual decision? Um, you know, it's not a mutual decision in, term, in terms of determining when and what to close. Mm -hmm. It's a coordinated decision. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have our folks on the ground that are communicating with their folks, and our state police, who were very helpful in the process, are communicating with their state police. And the uh, Gov governor's office of Homeland Security communicates with their office of Homeland Security, and they notify us in advance uh, what's going to happen, and we coordinate from that point. Uh, to make sure that we provide the proper detour. So in this instance, for example, if they closed I-10 at 5 o'clock in the afternoon, folks who are in Baton Rouge at 3 o'clock, they're going to experience it. Yeah. And for them, at 3 o'clock, I-10 is open. So if you get on your map app and you're looking at it, it's open. By the time you get to the Texas state line, it's closed. What do you do? Mm -hmm. So we began very early in this instance uh, advising people to take the detours and notifying them when uh, there was going to be a closure so that they could govern themselves accordingly. Well, I love that. I'm glad, so glad that you explained that because that was a question that people had. They're like, you know, why, why did they keep saying this if it's not closed? Because, hey, they don't want you to get stuck on the road. That's the last thing Absolutely. you guys want. Yeah. There's nothing worse than going in reverse on the interstate. So, yeah. Um, I, I equate it to saying, I want you to take every precaution to take those last three exits to get you to the nearest crossing point as opposed to getting to the state line and it closed at the last minute and you're inconvenienced. Mm -hmm. So that's a part of what we try to do in transportation. So, Secretary, I want to kind of get it down to sort of the Lafayette, Acadiana region now as as we Certainly. ask. You know, the, we have so many issues with, with roads and bridges. We definitely have a couple of bridges in the Acadiana area that have been shut down. There's no funding. Um, you know, in this area... Uh, what what's happening with roads and bridges for the Lafayette area? There's some good things that are happening and will happen. Um, there are, and and you know I'll tell you first and foremost, infrastructure is not cheap and it's not inexpensive, mm -hmm. and the cost of not having it is great. Yeah, and so yeah. Um, it and it, it's also not quick. So it, you know we have numbers of processes that we have to follow, and there's a project development process that we follow which is required if you're using federal funds, and you can't build major infrastructure without them. So um, we do have some really big things uh, under works, you know, whether it's the I-49 connector coming through Lafayette. We're, we're rounding that out and trying to complete the environmental update so that we can proceed to design. That project will be transformative for this community in that it will pull a great deal of traffic off of local streets, mm -hmm. as well as help prevent through traffic from going on those local streets and really connect both sides of the Evangeline Thruway and start to foster economic development. Um, then you've got other projects that we're looking at on our state routes in terms of uh, 
improving uh, corners and intersections with roundabouts or turn lanes. We're looking at things that can make uh, travel more efficient. At the end of the day, you cannot necessarily build your way out of congestion. So yeah. we have to look at how do you use technology? How do you provide a better intersection to keep people moving? How do you keep people safe first and foremost? You know, whether it's the, the J turns or the super highways, the work we've done on the Evangeline Thruway from um, Ambassador Caffrey South has improved safety by 30%. That's an and, amazing and that, amount. those are things that matter for me. Yeah. You know, those are things that I, I want people to be able to get home to their families at night the way they left in mm-hmm. one piece. And um, so those are the things we're looking at. We're also coordinating with uh, Parish President Robidoux's staff to make sure that we're uh, planning the right projects, that they're moving the right projects along that are important to the community, and that they're done in a way that adds value and does not take away from the community. Um, Historically, in transportation, we just cared about the road and getting through and didn't think about what it looked like, uh, didn't think about how it functioned with the neighbors. And the U.S. Secretary uh, of Transportation, Anthony Fox, was here probably a week and a half, two weeks ago, and he made a very good point that infrastructure should be like living room furniture. You're not going to go buy a chair that doesn't have good utility, that doesn't reflect who you are, and it's not fun to sit on and not where you want to invite people to. And and I agree with that. That's mm-hmm. the way our roads should be. That's the way our infrastructure should be. That's the way our airports should be. That's the way our ports should be. We should be inviting with our infrastructure. So those are the things we're working on. A lot, a lot in the hopper. Dr. Sean Wilson, Secretary of DOTD. Real quick before we let you go, uh, sure. uh, just want you should probably say hi to, you know, your Boy Scouts in, in Lafayette. Aren't you Scoutmaster for Troop 271? Good for you. I am <laughs> uh, Scoutmaster for Troop 271. And, you know, since being appointed, I was quite busy and I, I took a little leave of absence, if you will, for about six to eight weeks. And I had some really outstanding assistant scout masters who who held it together and some wonderful parents and most importantly, some outstanding scouts. And this is an opportunity for, say, you know, if you've got a young young son, scouting is a character building program that's about boys and for boys. And we we absolutely enjoy it. Uh, We enjoy getting out in the outdoors, uh, getting out in the Chafalaya Basin, going to camp, climbing towers, uh, you know, doing ATVs, doing horseback riding. All kinds of fun stuff. And so uh, get online and go to the Evangeline Area Boy Scout Council and uh, learn about it. Call a local scout master and uh, get involved. It's a fantastic program. Dr. Sean Wilson has been joining us, sir. Thank you so much for your time this morning. All right. Thank you. I'd love to have to come back whenever you need. Oh, yes, sir. Absolutely. We shall do that. All right. Have a good week, sir. Thank you. All right, coming up now on 751, what a great interview. I love when we talk to people uh, in charge of things like roads yes. and everything's on um, that. Two things. Number one, they really drive on them. Yep. That, you know, how can you be in charge of my roads if you live in the building where you work? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Absolutely, it's, man. How can you be a hairdresser when you're bald? Yes. You know, like, it's how, how do you know? And so he gets it. We talked to him a little bit before. We talked about the basin, yeah. uh, going in different directions. He gets it. He yep. totally gets it. And also every like, day he's on that road, you know? And I also like someone who's involved in other things mm-hmm. besides um, state. Just focusing on that. You know, yeah. that, that one thing. You know, mm-hmm. it's always good to be multifaceted. It is.